wake up. Riding dirty, moving nose on a quarter tank. Blowing good, stashing peas by the water tank. Whoop, that's how it is down in Port of Pain. Why I'm low, check the scene down in Port of Pain. Subliminal, I think they going at me. Or maybe I'm just paranoid, I don't know exactly. I light a big split facade, keep the moments happy. You're kind of highlighting Caribbean history, and um, but you're also highlighting history that's a part of the Americas in and of itself. You know, these are colonies that were located all throughout the Americas. And th that part of the story of our people is often not told. If we can connect it a, a little bit more to even our American audience, you know, we've heard of Seminole Indians, right? Especially from the Florida region, right? Well, the word Seminole, you know, was the name of, the tribe was actually called the Seminole, right? And that meant free peoples, right? And if you listen to the, um, the closeness of Seminole to Cimarron, which we explained where, is maroon, is a, um, where maroon is a corruption of that word, I, I want to tend to believe that Seminole is some sort of a, a corruption of the word Cimarron as well, because we know that at the Spanish were the ones who ruled Florida in the beginning, right? So the Native American tribes used a Spanish word to describe themselves once they became free. And, um, you know, so I find that also, also interesting. And Andrew Jackson, you know, President Jackson, who was, you know, famous for, you know, Trail of Tears. And he, they kind of used him because he was a general to kind of um, set the American path to getting rid of the Indians or moving them towards reservations and stuff. But before that even happened, he was also fighting and killing them. And That's right. um, they um, sent him to Florida to kill out a bunch of the tribes. And is supposedly said that he wrote a letter back to DC saying, y'all sent me kill, y'all sent me here to kill Indians. And all I found was ninjas. Yep. Right. And yep. so, there, so there's also a story there about the Native American tribes being African too. That's so, right. you know, we don't have to go into that, but I just find that very interesting for him to make that statement. Because if there's one thing white people can do is recognize a black person, right? We know, <laughs> we know that, right? That's and right. so you see from Florida to Jamaica, Jamaica to Haiti to Brazil, like, you know, Brazil's not in the Caribbean, right? Um, you know, so the, the idea of the Maroons, the idea of African people running away from their captors, fighting their captors, um, staving them off, forming these um, autonomous societies, you know, being one with the land. I mean, the Maroons in Jamaica, they were able to live off of the land, right? Mm -hmm. They were using guerrilla warfare and tactics to fight the British. And the word, mm -hmm. and jerk seasoning, all we, we know about Jamaican being f famous for jerk um, chicken and those things. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. actually, in, when you go to Jamaica, Jamaicans really eat jerk pork more than they eat jerk chicken. And the reason for mm -hmm. that is that the Maroons had to feed themselves in the bush, in the mountainous regions. And what was running around in the bush? Not chickens, but wild mm -hmm. boar. And mm -hmm. so they developed, jerk seasoning is actually a sort of a way of refrigeration. It's like curing the meat. So they would mm -hmm. dig holes in the ground, right? And they would light these fires and make these pits. And mm -hmm. they, would, um, they, uh, they would use the different herbs and spices that they found in the wild to, to season the meat. And that developed into jerk, the idea, the, the process of jerking. And that is why jerk pork is more um, popular in Jamaica than jerk chicken. Now, sure, once you get out of Jamaica, you come to countries like America and everywhere else, people like to eat chicken. So they, they jerk the chicken, right? The Jamaicans yeah. will sell you jerk chicken because they know that's something you'd buy faster maybe than pork, right? right. And right. so that is the reason why jerk chicken is more popular you know outside of jamaica but once you get to jamaica jerk pork is more popular and that is because of the maroons directly okay mm. and um, the last person here um is captain kujo and kujo was queen nanny's brother right so he was also a um he was also a maroon leader and actually, he was the leader of the Second Maroon War. So when I told you how the Leeward Maroons, that's like um, Jamaica, they formed a treaty with Britain in 1739. That was part of, that was at the end of the First Maroon War. That was 12 years. It started in 1728, right? And um, so then I told you how the, with the treaty, they were kind of forced to kind of help the British 
you know, capture other runaways at that point. And it kind of came to a head in, um, when was the Second World War? I want to say it was like 1790, 1795, at the end of the 18th century. And basically the confusion started because you had these different maroon communities popping up and some people were kind of like not honoring the treaty, right? Like they were not sending back the, the runaways to the British, the British, you know, kind of, you know, what the British do, what the British are masters of is divide and conquer. That's so when right. these different maroon camps form up, they go to one maroon camp and say, hey, you know, those guys stole your, your pig the other day and you didn't know. You know, those guys stole your woman the other day and you didn't know. And now, you know, they sow the seeds of divisiveness, right, in, within the maroon communities. And then the maroon communities kind of started to fight each other. Mm. And the British were helping one community over the other. That's the other thing they do, right? Like you at the United States learned that from Britain too. You go into a country, you want to get rid of one group of people, so you supply their, their enemies. You give them guns, you give them intelligence, you give them supplies, right? And that's what the British did. So that sparked the second Maroon War, and Captain Cujo was one of the leaders um, who was basically, um, people were like telling on him, right? He wasn't a collaborator with the British. He was one of the people always fighting in the British and some other Maroon leaders kind of were selling him out. So again, mm -hmm. you know, it's not the part of the history we want to hear, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to mention those things because revolution change is it's messy. It's not, it's not clean. It's not straightforward all the time. There's a lot of nuance, you know? And you know, so part of... Uh, you know, part of having, making sure that I had these different leaders, different Maroon leaders from different countries was also to show that, you know, because my brand is third world famous, right? The connections. So, you know, you have Haiti, Jamaica, and Brazil all in one, in one design. And, you know, we mentioned the Seminoles in Florida, you know, St. Vincent, another Caribbean island, they had the Black Caribs, right? They were basically other maroon communities. They got transported to Central America and they became the Garifuna people. So mm -hmm. Belize, Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala, all those Garifuna people are quote unquote black Caribs from St. Vincent. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so so there was mm -hmm. the Maroons were in Central America, the Caribbean, South mm -hmm. America, and even in the United States, you know? Yeah. All so throughout the Americas. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, they're not. There was also a maroon community in Virginia. Um, I know the name begins with D, and I great and it, the Great Dismal Swamp. Yes, just, yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes, yes. So yeah. thank you. Yes. So yeah. again, there. That's not something. Well, I, okay, I didn't. Um, I didn't do high school or anything in the United States, so I don't know if that was part of the curriculum. But I have been a teacher in DC for more than uh, for about fifteen years now. I didn't mm -hmm. teach history. But, you know, I know my students and I never heard them talking about stuff like that. I never. Yeah, I mean, you know, they students. did. I forget um, the name of the book, but um, they did. Uh, there was a book about the Great Dismal Swamp that okay. um, someone actually took the time to chronicle. I think from mm. what I was told, it was a white guy who took the time to chronicle the history wow. of it. And. Um, it just that that whole text just disappeared. No one has right. any record of it. They cannot find it. Um, okay. But it was yes. really right. It was mm -hmm. really a, a full account of some of the people who, who lived there, their journey there. Um, but we don't have uh, that that text available anymore, right. unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, what a shame. Yeah, very much. Um, but, you know, we get a lot of people who want to travel. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, the times right now, things are, are very interesting times. I'll just right. say that. Um, but, um, you know, we know things are going to return back to normal uh, in a matter of, of time. What message do you think people should, should think about as they travel um, throughout the Caribbean specifically? What I would say is that since you're already spending the money, you're taking the time and the energy, plan a trip, buy a ticket, do all of those things, why not get more out of it rather than just my ties on the beach? You know what I mean? Like there's so much 
history and culture and you you're there you're there you might as well take advantage now i know that's a lot of times easier said than done because you you might go into a place where you don't know anyone but again do some homework before you even buy your ticket. That, I mean, you have, uh, you know, a, a lot of different uh, types of merchandise, but like just the storytelling that you're able to do behind that one shirt, like that mm. is just, I, I mean, that's just beautiful. Like I, I okay. really uh, connect so much to, mm. to that message. I mean, it's just fascinating. Tell, tell our folks, how can they find you? How can they follow you? How can they buy your merchandise? Because this is just one of a number of different pieces yeah, yeah. that he has. He, I mean, he has amazing pieces. I'm really excited. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so my IG page is Third World Famous. That's with the number three, R-D, World Famous, all one word. And in there, there's also, the in my bio, there's a link to our website, but the website is also thirdworldfamous.com, spelled the same way. And um, also Third World Famous, spelled the same way on Facebook. And, um, you know, I'm on Clubhouse, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I met uh, uh, Miss Jessica. And, yeah. you know, we made a, a great connection. And here we're doing this interview. I appreciate that. Um, yes, I'm so excited. This is like, I've done a number of interviews. This is like my favorite, favorite. I Thank love you. it. It's so rich. Um, I and I, I'm so thankful for you. And we look forward uh, to bringing you, you back and having further conversations. I'd love um, to. I, I, for, for those of you who are watching, you will be able to find uh, in the um, description of this video links to um, Brahma's web website. We'll also make sure that those of you who are on our mailing list that you um, get uh, access to where you can just click directly uh, and check out his merchandise, buy his merchandise. I will be like really promoting uh, my favorite shirt, <laughs> one of my favorite shirts. I've, I've seen another uh, couple shirts I got to get to in the collection. Okay. Um, okay. But these are really, in my opinion, uh, very close to collector's items. I really love uh, what you're doing. Uh, and I, I encourage you to definitely continue and we'll do uh, what we have to do on our end to continue to support and spread the word about uh, what you're doing. It's just fascinating and, and amazing. Thank you. And if there's anything I can, you, you all have merchandise on your side, Jess, for, for Black Travelers Network? Yeah, well, a lot of what we do is we encourage different people to travel. And so um, we, we are also um, rolling out a number of our different educational opportunities. And our educational opportunities are more uh, centered around, around those who want to start their own uh, businesses. And so I'll definitely loop you in uh, when we okay. have uh, things going on. But um, a lot of what you talk about in terms of the cultural aspect, we do that exploring, uh, and, and exploring Brazil. Um, mm -hmm. Brazil is definitely uh, on our list and uh, we're looking to expand uh, to different parts of the Caribbean, but at the same time, like we're, we're very intentional about when we do uh, uh, certain experiences and how we do them. So we'll, we'll definitely connect with you on that. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And it was Appreciate great, it. great chatting with you.